Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here. It's late in the evening and I am down here playing around with my trains. Uh, today I received a BrickLink order. Within that order I received one of these 9 volt motors. These are the modern 9 volt motors that uh, LEGO discontinued back in 2007. I decided to get another one. I really like this one because it's in great running condition and it actually has all of these clips on either end and these are important for the, uh, the functionality of certain engines um, that this goes to. So I took the opportunity here with all of my trains that had that motor in them and I took them all out and what I'm trying to do here is test them all to see if any of them have lost any power in comparison to other motors uh, because some are very old and some are very very used so I'm going to show you that test here today. Alright so down here in the residential area I have all of my 9 volt motors lined up end to end. I have a total of nine of them and my plan here is to turn the regulators on down there uh, full power and have all of these thunder down the line and probably have them go probably till about this uh, point right here and then shut it off and after they stop I will see how great of a variance there is in space between them now ideally and now if all these were brand new out of the box and I did this test they would all end up end to end just like they are right here but like I said uh, some are very old um, some are uh, have been run a lot more than others so I'm expecting there to be a variance now I've already done some pre-testing uh, with one-on-ones uh, so I, these uh, for my uh, expectation here is this one is going to be my fastest whereas this one will be my slowest so that is the setup and I put these uh, these tiles on each and every one a different tile uh, just so I can recognize which ones are doing what if I switch them in their place. Okay, so we're down here by the regulators. I got the camera set up to capture the uh, the finish line, I guess. So let's turn these on and do uh, test number one. Okay, so the results are in and it looks like my pre-tests have paid off because there is a gap between a lot of these. So now, this one did the best. It has a gap between first and second, as you can see, so it is slightly faster than the one with the red cross on it. Now, from second to third, there's a pretty good uh, variance here. There's about three car lengths here between the two. Uh, so there's an even uh, greater variance uh, or disparity of power between this Explorian one and the red cross one. So further down the line, not too further, maybe two Lego car lengths, we have these three, which seem to me uh, that they indicate the average speed here. So these are number four, five, and six, and there's not much of a, a difference in space between any of them. So those seem to be uh, the averages here. Now further down the line, we seem to get see the weaker ones of the bunch, and these are probably the older ones that have been run the most uh, here. So this is my Octan one, and uh, I guess that's a surfer signal, I'm not sure. But uh, so there's a pretty big gap here until these two happen. There's not too much of a difference here. Um, now ninth place, my last one, unfortunately, never got off the line. And I'm not too surprised at this. This one has had a lot of problems. So this one sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. And when it does, it's very weak. So uh, we'll do another test and see if, uh, if that works. Um, let's go back here to these guys right here. Um, it might be worth uh, switching these two around to see if um, the Mtron actually has a better jump on the Ice Planet one. Okay, back at the starting line, I said we were going to swap over the Mtron and Ice Planet, so let's do that. And get everything set again. Uh, give this one a, you know, a little bit of a warm up. I don't know if it's gonna go or not, but we'll see. Okay, so they're all lined up. Let's go ahead with test number two. Okay, here are the results of test number two. Again, these two lead the way, probably about the same amount of gap there, no, no surprise. Uh, from second to third, there seems to be a, a pretty good gap to the Explorian one, so a little bit bigger there, it seems. Now, number four, five, and six, remember these were really close to each other last time, and there's a bigger gap, so it does appear that this uh, Ice Planet one was holding back the Mtron a little bit. So I think uh, we'll do one more test here, and we'll switch these two to see if... Uh, the uh, ice planet is actually slower than the uh, the shell. Uh, number seven and eight, uh, pretty much 
the same spot they were last time. I don't see any surprises there. Uh, but take a look at this. Uh, number nine actually started this time. Um, but even though it moved, uh, this this is really weak. I mean, you look at the comparison uh, between number one and number nine. Even though there was a gap at the beginning, uh, we know that this is really weak. And so I know if I put this in a train, it's not going to um, add much value as far as power goes. So let's do one more test and uh, see what we come up with. All right, just to set up test number three, we are going to switch the ice planet with the shell and see if it's actually uh, faster. All right, here goes test number three. Here are the results of test number three. Again, these two, no uh, no change there. Pretty consistent. I like consistency. Uh, number three, again, about the same length as last test, uh, looks like, for the Explorian one. Uh, but take a look at this. Look where Shell did uh, uh, ended up. Uh, they ended up right next to Mtron, so they beat the heck out of the uh, the Ice Planet one. So that I guess I was wrong in my qualifying sessions with, uh, with this particular motor. And if I did a fourth test, I'd actually put this in front of the Mtron motor and see if it outperforms that. So that is very interesting uh, to see that. Uh, these ones, again, no surprise, they always end up right next to this bus station. But hey, there's a, a very small gap uh, between the middle guys and the back guys here. And of course, uh, bringing in the rear here is the, um, unfortunately, is the caution sign. This is the uh, exact same spot this one uh, ended up in uh, at the last test. So this one, unfortunately, uh, is, is going to have to go into storage. If you guys own uh, these 9-volt uh, motors and you have the same problem with it losing power and not moving at all, I'd be interested to know if you have any methods of repairing them or fixing them. I'd, uh, I'd like to get that thing back into commission. So, But anyway, that is my test. Now you might be asking, what the heck does that all mean? Well, to me, it means that, hey, these are my more powerful motors and uh, they should go in my more, uh, the heavier trains. Like, for example, if you guys own the Horizon Express, you know that this thing is a beast. It's heavy, and especially if you're in a city where you have hills like mine, uh, you need it to have a lot of power. So I would probably put those in here. Um, but actually, I think I'm going to have to put power functions in here. Um, the the 9 volts are just struggling with there, uh, with the, uh, the Horizon Express. But the Maersk train is the, the next heaviest train. This has a lot of drag. Um, I, I, I think I'll probably put those... Uh, more powerful ones in there and the rest by comparison is not a huge difference um, every one of these motors is going to do just fine there might be a small uh, difference in speed overall but it's not going to be a problem you're not going to have any uh, massive power problems uh, as a result so that's it guys that is my video uh, my little test uh, my little crazy scientific method there are other ways more probably more effective ways of doing this I know uh, and you'll probably tell me anyway but this is my my way of doing some tests so I hope you learned something and uh, give me some feedback if you'd like. I'd, I'd like to hear it. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.